Welcome to the group chat that we call the Untitled Film Project Podcast. <laughs> We're talking about Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. Miles Morales swings into the multiverse, meeting a team of spider people, so many spider people, who protect the multiverse. But the multiverse is in peril, and Miles has to figure out how to save it, even if all the spider people don't agree how. Being Spider-Man is a sacrifice. You have a choice between saving one person and saving every world. So many choices. We're going to talk about uh, Across the Spider-Verse, and we'll also get into our big question, which is kind of weird. But if... It's Spider-Man. He's bitten by a radioactive spider. The big question is, if you could be bitten by a radioactive animal of any sort, what would it be, and what superhero would you turn into? Your special powers, stuff like that. We'll get into that coming up. So we finally get another vision of the Spider-Verse. Uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse initial takes. Let's start with Justin Bradford. Oh boy. This... Should I go out and get a cup of coffee? Or? <laughs> well, we're going to dive deeper into this. Okay. Um, this was an am- ambitious movie with everything that they wanted to cover and to dive into and including how much me not included because I'm not as big of a comic book fan per se in terms of reading them growing up, but how many people out there understand comic book lore and the universe and the writing and are such mega fans of this and super credit to Sony and the production team because they pulled off something that was so ambitious and made it an almost perfect movie. This this film with the beautiful animation styling, the way they expressed emotion through color through music, mm-hmm. through dialogue. This right here is one of those films where Sony is putting Disney on notice. They're putting so many other animation studios on notice of, you better get your stuff together because we're coming for you. <laughs> because we are proving to you what an animated film should be like and what you can expect, what you can accomplish in an animated film, that you can cover deep, deep conversations. You can progress a character story so much through so many different ways of animation that you shouldn't put yourself into a box of animated stylings. We've seen so many things come from the first into the Spider-Verse film in terms of animation stylings because we saw touches of it in Puss in Boots that came out back in the winter. In the action sequences, we've seen inspiration come from the Spider-Verse films and they took it to a whole nother level in this film and it's not just the animation stylings but fantastic dialogue character building continuing the characters from the first one and building upon those giving gwen stacy more of a character arc building miles into a more complete spider-man and diving into so many things that make you just sit there and you have to go watch this film again this for me is easily the best film of 2023 so far, and it should 100%, even though we're halfway, th- only halfway through the year, be nominated for film of the year. Wow. It 100% should win animated Whoa. film of the year. Out of the gate, we've I'm got out of a the gate with this. Glowing. This film accomplished so many things, and expectations were extremely high for this film. When you, when you think of everything that Into the Spider-Verse accomplished and setting a new standard for Spider-Man films, this went above and beyond. This is the Empire Strikes Back of Spider-Man because it took it to a whole new level and left you with a cliffhanger just like Empire Strikes Back did. We are left with a cliffhanger knowing they have, to have, they have something to resolve and leaves you with this pump-up, team-up moment that you want yeah. the next one so quickly. And we only have to wait a year, thankfully, but it leaves you with so many moments and it, it tangles with your emotions in this film as much too, that you connect with an animated character so well that it feels like real life. All right, Jeremy Gover. I can't follow that. <laughs> uh, You're going to have to. I know, but I, I don't really know what to say other than the fact that I thoroughly enjoyed it. Even though I... Tr- tell you guys all the time that I don't like to bring my expectations into a film because it's not fair to the film. My expectations will not, well, that won't weigh on my score, but I will tell you in fairness because I'm a human being and my expectations going in were, okay, this is going to be average. 
why? I'm about to tell. Thank you for asking. I'm about to yeah, tell you. you're welcome. <laughs> because, Dramatic pause. Because the first movie I really, really liked a lot, right? But then, you know, sequels usually let you down. It's kind of like, okay, you know, whatever. Cash grab. Blah, Hard blah, blah, to recreate blah. the magic. They yeah. pushed this back. Ooh. Right, so I was like, okay, they're clearly not finished with it. I can see why now. But at the time, I was like, all right, like you know, the, there's there's problems with it. Maybe they got to do some rewrites. You know, like usually, usually when you delay a movie this long, it's like okay, like the Funko Pop collector box for those who collect, those are usually timed around a movie release. Well, it right. came out six months ago. That's how long ago this one came out. Okay, because that's when the original was supposed to come out. Yeah. So. My point of saying all this is that I walked in thinking, okay, I'm going to be entertained just as a Marvel fan. But overall, you know, I'll leave like, okay, it's all right. And I was blown away. The All the hype that I accidentally read on Twitter <laughs> <laughs> about like how it was visually stunning and this and that. And it's, you know, cr- it's breaking new barriers for animation and all this stuff. All true. I mean, just wow. There wasn't... Uh Nobody was hyping this movie any more than they should have. It was it was great. I also thought, boy, the first Spider Verse movie was a revelation, uh, and I'm going to say especially just visually. Uh, I thought, wow, how can they top what my eyes saw? There's a band, Bare Naked Ladies, and they they say, where does where did our name come from? People have asked them mm-hmm. that, and uh, they said. Uh, okay, think you're, you know, a a young man and the excitement of the first time you saw a bare naked lady. That's the feeling we want you to have when you hear our music. And <laughs> that's the feeling I had when watching this Spider-Verse version. It was even more visually spectacular. I had goosebumps. Mm. I'm lacking uh, the proper terminology but I'll try to take a stab at it. This thing is so visually arresting and beautiful and gorgeous at the same time that I don't feel like I'm watching an animated film. Uh, They are using graphic printing, physical uh, art. It feels like I'm watching it. I'm seeing the the duo tone of the dots with the color, Mm -hmm. and I'm seeing what what looks like, and it could also have been colored with charcoal, and it has this gritty look, but yet at other times, it's just eye-poppingly you know, pizzazz and, and just, it, it takes over. So, uh, this is, uh, no, t- uh, dig on any of the rest of the movie because I like the movie, but it is one of the most visually spectacular things I have seen in years. And that's why I said what I said. <laughs> well, good for you. It is good for me. Might as well put it out there. Spotify. I hope you're listening again. <laughs> All right, so let's get a deeper look into Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Justin Bradford, you have, like, you've got the words. You are wordsmith on this one. <laughs> uh, because you kind of took what we were all going to say uh, in our, your initial take. So He also planted his flag, though, early. He did. I, did. I, I questioned him, and he was like, no, no, we're going to de- dive deeper on this. Yeah. So, hey, we let's, are. Let's dive deeper. Well, in these are there's going to be so many discussion topics over this film, right? What impressed me right Let's off the bat... try to keep ba- him concise. I, I know. <laughs> what impressed me right off the bat was the introduction we got of Gwen. Like, it was yeah. a 20-minute intro to this movie to set what Gwen Stacy's dealing with in her Earth. And I love that because that's character building so very well that it's not all about Miles. This is a Miles-centric story, but yeah. we have to understand what's going on with other characters and what Gwen's dealing with as well, which is amazing. But what that deals with is the animation styling and what I loved so much about this was emotion being expressed through color and especially yeah. in Gwen's world we're seeing so much watercolor right whether it's a dark moment and all of a sudden snap and it's briefly a bright moment how the watercolor changes to something bright and pastel I'm loving those moments and how the animation crew for this just took emotion plastered on the screen but it wasn't in your face it surrounded it like you have accent lighting around a TV right and it's supposed to add to the experience it just adds to the moment of what you're experiencing in the film with color and so this first topic is an animation uh, <laughs> but then you get into miles world which a lot of times is dark we're seeing lots of darkness it's right. a nighttime, and we, a little grittier it's, it's, gritty. it's, it's got that uh city soot 
very kind of much going so. on, yeah. But what I love, we we see this problem in so many movies, live action movies. Some movies are dark. Everybody's complaining about movies being dark. Sure, they accomplish darkness so very well in animation to yeah. utilize other lighting from signs from lights in the city and everything to fill up that darkness to where you can still visually see everything as well. But what stood out the most to me, this is the mental note I repeated to myself seven times during the film. So I wouldn't forget (laughs) it was what I love so much about the animation and miles world is the use of reflection off of skin. Yeah. Because we are seeing where they are in the depth of what's reflecting off their skin. And that gives it that live action feel, even though, you know, it's animation, Yeah, but you know, there's a, a bright sign over here and it's reflecting off their face. Right. Or, there, or there's moonlight time. coming in in a window yes. and it's just hitting it's half beautiful. of his face, but you're getting the full expression of the details, what he's trying to the, the details emote. that we see in animation through this. And then during action sequences with animation as well too, what we're seeing the comic book feel with animation styling yeah. throughout the, all the different spider people as well too. And I love that. That is a challenge to yeah. pull that off, whether it's Hobie or the animated versions of Spider-Man, all these different ones, just mass credit to the people that worked on this film because it is absolutely stunning what they pulled off with animation. I, I sometimes sat there and wondered like, is this even, I know everything's digital now, but like, you know, just the, thinking of, of a film celluloid, you know, from, from a classic movie, like, I'm not, I feel like they're projecting something that they drew on paper mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, when it gets very comic booky and you have like those little, uh, you know, rectangles where, where a piece of dialogue or an extra piece of information is shown on the screen and it looks like it was printed on old newsprint, you know, from 1975, you know, a comic book that would be, you know, really valuable at a convention. And I get that feel, but it's still, yes, it's, it's all so modern. And it was just, it's gorgeous. I agree with what you said earlier. You actually knew the term, and I did not, for comic dots. Yeah. Uh, That was so impressive because it was so quick. Or it was, it was, you know, zoomed out of those. So you could see them in a second, and then all of a sudden they were were gone. Right. And you could get that depth of animation that way. They would put up, if they said some sort of, like, comic book vocabulary, they would put a little key at the bottom like they would on a comic book frame. Yes, yes. And it was just, or panel, whatever the language is. It was just so masterfully done. And I'm not a comic book guy, but I can, I can just, I just know that my comic book people, right, uh, just shout out to Tommy at Cadets Toys, Joey at Cadets Toys, the people that I are in my life that are comic book people. I know we're just going to salivate over that idea executed well. Yeah. Because I'm sure it's, maybe some people have tried it before or they try to get that same point across or whatever the case is, but it was so flawless and so effortless. And, and not so, campy at all. Right. No. right. That's what I'm saying. It fits within. It, it, right. It really did fit like a, like a, like a, using the correct tool. Yeah. Even, even at the very beginning, after the opening, where you hear the, you see the little cough. Yes. In the bottom corner. Yes. yes. It's setting what you're going to expect right off the bat, which you're in a comic book, and also everyone always coughs the quiet part, right? Right. So, <laughs> so I love that. <laughs> and, and and it makes you smile. And you know, if we could if we use that as a segue into uh, this movie, I mean, they even talk about it. It's Spider-Man is supposed to be funny, right? It it was something they brought up in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it is you're expecting something funny, but the way they pull off uh, the comedy in this is unlike other Spider-Man franchises. There is a just like we're not trying very hard to be funny. We just are. Mm-hmm. It was very well written. Yeah, very very well written. And you see a lot of times in MCU f- live action films, a lot of times, and what they get docked for so much is forced comedy or mm-hmm. comedy that doesn't it's not present and doesn't need to be there it's not natural whereas everything flows so well within the dialogue here because spider-man is is witty he is extremely witty always has the quips and everything villain of the week you know little things mm-hmm. like there's always a quip going on there but it fits within the dialogue so well that sometimes it passes right over because they're not giving you a pause for laughter break it's going right. right through on in the film and i appreciate that because they're not trying to say you need to laugh at this moment right now because it's right. a joke it's, it's not the it's, laugh or applause yeah. sign in the <laughs> audience. It's the natural dialogue, which is what you expect out of the comic books as well. It's like you're reading a comic book when you're listening to the dialogue, and I love that. Shamik Moore, I 
really love the way he is able to portray uh, a confused 15 year old uh, and and to pull it off and make it seem so believable because uh, you know what are you at 15 years old you're a you're a mess you're you're a bag of hormones you're trying to everybody's got expectations on you and uh, the way he pulls off that character's uh, uh, you know, confusion at some times, overconfidence in other times, uh, loving his parents dearly, but mouthing off to him. I mean, there's just such a, a real quality to what he's bringing to the voice acting in these movies. I'll do you one. I'll throw one more log in that fire. The writing is so great that they have set it up to where I'm literally in my seat going, this can go 50, 50. Look, it's, a feature film, he's the lead character. 99 times out of 100, maybe even 999 times out of 1,000, he's going to survive, okay? Yeah. But in the moment, you're like, well, I can see both ways 50-50. You're either arrogant or you're right. You have to go find your own way, and I applaud that. Yeah. Which is it? And then you have to let it play out. And he conveys right. all that as the actor. He does. He does it really well. All right, let's get into cameos because there were plenty of them. Mm -hmm. Justin, which one stood out to you? I mean, the one that probably people are talking about the most would be Donald Glover. Oh, yeah. That yes. was awesome. Uh, I mean, that right there is a nice tie-in to the Tom Holland mm -hmm. MCU version of the films. And it's him being Prowler because he was teased as Aaron in, yeah. that, in Homecoming as well. And we all thought, oh, what's going to happen with him? And nothing came of it in the first three <laughs> movies, at least. Yep. But at least bringing him in there, using archival footage of the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, the Andrew yeah. Garfield Spider-Man, and we get a connection to the Venom universe with the convenience store. That was I mean, awesome. This was so yes. well thought out, but it wasn't one of those things where we're just, we're going to hit you with cameos. It made sense with where they plop them, which is why it's not campy to me. And I appreciate what they did because they tied things in in brief little moments, just like in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, when in, in the collector's mm. room, there they're just you're passing by things that make you point out and go ooh ooh ooh. It if, doesn't if you know what they are. If you know what they are, but if you right. don't, it you doesn't don't have take to away know anything that's from the movie. Right. That's and right. And that's what that's yeah. what is great about it too. There's and I, so and I love that, that Donald Glover's cameo. Uh, he is the only one that looks like it's a live action yeah. film. Mm -hmm. great. So they, I mean, they brought him in properly. Yeah. The way we we knew him, the way the the reference they were coming, in, like they didn't animate him you could just see him mm -hmm. everything else is animated because but in that universe he is a real person yeah, exactly he's live action yeah. that references to dr strange yeah. as well and tom holland spider-man what happened yes. in no way home i mean we got the animated versions that we grew up with watching if you're a millennial you grew up watching those animated versions we got the meme again yeah, i was the, just huh, 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 the pointing which is dead by now by the way i, yeah, I, I but don't know still, but you I also, still, I no, but still you also like have it. to do it i think i you have to do it. yeah because you're going to be unsatisfied yes. if you walk away and it doesn't happen yeah but seeing it happen with a thousand spider-mans pointing to each other when you know uh <laughs> Spider-Man 2099 says, you know, Spider-Man, stop him. And they're all like, which one? No, they set it up <laughs> where it made sense and it worked. I'm yeah. just saying like we, we saw it in No Way Home. Yeah. Like, right. It's, and so it was like, okay. Yeah. Like we've seen it. That scratched that itch. All right. Yeah. We don't need to see it again. How, how about, but, but J how do you not do it? You know, how about JK Simmons? J Jonah James. We get his voice. I, I his, was waiting for Jimmy to bring that. Uh, up. He loves him some JK Simmons. You oh, know, yeah. I do. Whatever JK you Simmons. jump out of your seat applauding when you heard his voice? Cause <sighs> Uh, yes, yes, I did. I did. I actually saw this movie in 4DX, which I don't recommend. Oh, oh. yeah, no. It's too much because, <laughs> like, it, to me, it detracted from what uh, th what I wanted to see on the screen. You know, bouncing around in my seat, yeah. it missed and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, yes, yeah, so I did jump up in my seat, probably coincidentally, because mm. the seat was throwing me into the air. But J.K. Simmons, as J. Jonah Jameson, is the be all end all J, J. Jonah yes. <laughs> So for him to, to get that voice role was superb. And we, I mean, obviously the Lego universe. That was Spider awesome Man too. It was fun. I mean, there's so many little things like that. Uh, right at the very beginning, the comic code authority logo mm -hmm. yes. stamped right on there as well. A nice throwback yep. uh, to everything. I mean, what I love is the Easter eggs in this were so detailed and you could tell the people that made this, really appreciate the comics they care they care absolutely thought. it's not money grab for the sake of we need to make a sequel because the first one did so well it's there's thought behind this or they're building something bigger which is what i was worried about like i said going right. in i was worried about okay this is just a money grab you know but holy crap was i wrong oh it 
And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you can admit that you're wrong. I always admit that I'm wrong <laughs> when I'm wrong. <laughs> um, okay, how about the how about important the guy, caveat there? How about the guy in the chair reference as well? That was in great. Changing in his dorm, yeah. Nice little. I'm not, your guy, I'm not your guy in the chair. I'm not your guy in the chair. And then, did you notice what his roommate was playing? No, I did not. On PS4, he's no. playing Spider Man. How was he? <laughs> yes, he was. Yes, he was. <laughs> so it's it's incredibly fantastic of the thought put in this because now what this is doing too for fans. You have to go see it again. What did I miss the first time I saw it? Oh, yeah. Well, I gotta go see it again. The answer is a ton. Like, the repeat yeah. views of this in the theater is going to be great. And there haven't been many movies lately that have required a repeat viewing because you might have missed something. Not sure. That's the last one I can remember. And that wasn't even in the theater that long. Right. Uh, you know, this is one where you, you grab that friend of yours that you know is going to yes. appreciate uh-huh. it. And you, like, pull them into the theater. Yep. So, like, okay, I know you want to see it, but no, we're going. Mm-hmm. And we're going to go see it tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. as soon as they open. <laughs> and because uh, I'm going to go see it again at least once. Oh, yeah. Uh, because it, it's it's Not so rich. Yeah. <laughs> see it in a regular I'm going to see it in a regular showing in <laughs> Dolby or maybe IMAX. But uh, yeah, I don't recommend 4DX. So before we get to our scores, in terms of the story overall, I wanted to get your guys' thoughts before I give mine as well. In terms of the canon event and Miles Morales being obviously different from these thousands of other spider man that are led by 2099. But in terms of how he caused the rift and then coming to him where he's the anomaly. And I love how that's the arc that he is the anomaly. He is different. He's different for a reason and that he thinks different. And I love that because it's putting him against the world, which is what you want to see for a hero, right? For the hero arc with that, yeah. it's him against the world. But what did you all think of how this came to be in terms of how he has to realize what he's going to do and how they ended the film as well with where they did end it? I definitely loved the way they fleshed out uh, the relationship you're having with Miles and what he can do and what's expected of him because they did it really well with his parents, both in the first film and in this film. Miles' parents are are constantly dragging him to, you know, the uh, counselor's office who's trying to get him into the, the great school. So, I mean, they deal with these, like, you're not old enough, you're you're not special, but wait, you're special. <laughs> so there's all these, these super mixed messages that this 15-year-old boy is trying to figure out who's got superpowers. And those same messages came out only stronger uh, when he gets to uh, Miguel and Spider-Man 2099, who's saying, like, you can't do this. You can't... And, and so I think there's, a, there's an element of... Uh, the world puts expectations or limits on you and the way uh, in every relationship, including the climactic, you know, uh, fight for, I want to save my universe and all of them. When Miles says that, I think was just built beautifully. They, they gave us that whole arc of here he is, what he's been told and he's got to figure it out himself, even if he doesn't know what the answer is. So uh, I thought that was great storytelling. I can't add a whole lot more. <laughs> I, see, I mean, I'm, I'm not purposely going last on all these, but it's, I mean, you guys are, I still gotta go. you guys are summering it. Well, okay. <laughs> I, I also want to steal your thunder because I know no, you're no, going no, no. to bring the heat. But for me, I just love how they character developed Gwen in almost a cold open. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then they go to the title screen, they come back, and now it's Miles' movie. But they had to do the Gwen thing in order to make it go full circle with the dad. And the, So I just loved all that. I, I just I loved the conundrum in Spider-Man 2099's universe, I guess you'd call it, yeah. right? about how you, you, can't go, you can't go fixing things. Because you do wonder, I think, as an audience member, you go, okay, well, you feel for the kid. But, mm-hmm. I mean, there are bad things that have happened to each one of us. Some worse than others, but there are there are bad things that have happened to each one of us that we became better people for, hopefully. Right. right. So you're like, all right, well, I mean that that's a tough pill to swallow, but okay, if you have to do you know, so you, I mean you're, yeah, you're, that you're, whole... you're, you're chewing on the moral dilemma of would I go back and save my father, for example, or would I just be yeah. like, Well, the, I mean, everyone's telling me unanimously this has to happen. And if I'm gonna lose everybody Right, and in, in these scars, they, they're not they're what fair. We, argue, they're not fair to put on somebody. Yeah, but these come up every day in real life. Exactly. So I, I, I appreciated that it made me feel that in an animated movie in the middle of a movie theater. That yep. that's a that's quite a triumph. 
there's a decision that's having to be made of you're just letting someone die. You're letting someone die. And, and when you have the opportunity to potentially save them, instead of they already died, I right. can't go back and save them. I can't change the past. Here, it's the can I change the future from happening. And to put all this on a 15-year-old right. who's going through everything, who can't tell his parents, is struggling with the how do I tell my parents. And the moment that he does, it's not even his earth. Yeah, right. And that heartbreaking because I'm feeling emotional because you're, you can see the struggle in an animated character. You can see the struggle that he's going through. And they're the way they're portraying it is that Gwen is out listening to him because it's raining in both earths. Yeah. And you don't get that reveal. You know, something's up, you know, something's weird, but you don't know what it is until that reveal happens. You're going to go, oh, you gotta be kidding. He's me. in the I, wrong earth. I yeah. honestly thought I didn't call the wrong earth thing, but I did think his room looked weird. Yeah, it, right. But I didn't. But I didn't call the. We wrong knew it was thing. weird. We didn't know what. But, I, yeah. but the one when you said something's going to happen, I honestly thought Gwen was going to come in the room, and then drop the bomb that he was Spider Man. That mm -hmm. I thought she was going to do it, and then he would get mad at her for meddling, and then you, that's another choice you took away from me. Blah blah blah. That's right. where I thought it was going to go. So it was really neat when it was something completely mm -hmm. different than that. That was Absolutely. really cool. Absolutely, and then just the way they were able to. Uh, I unfortunately knew that it was going to be a part one because I did come across no, that. I, yeah. When not everybody did. Well, it was a that. surprise to me. It, it was a surprise oh, was to a lot really? of people. It was. Okay. To, so, to, to be I, thought, I thought they promoted that. I right. did not expect it to be continued. Right. Well, then so, you really got slammed then at the end. I did. Right, so okay. I could feel it coming. You could feel that wrap up. Now that you know, you, right. can, you can sense that point where, oh, they're starting to wrap it up into the to be continued part and once that started happening we're going oh they were really leaving this with a cliffhanger but what i love at the end how spider gwen you at least see it that she's formed a task force mm -hmm. and you see the noir so that means hopefully we get the yes, case. Nick case. Yeah. You see spider ham yeah <laughs> back as well hopefully get john mulaney back to <laughs> yeah so you see the the task right. force being created and that's one of those moments like mm. okay now i'm pumped for the next one because it wasn't just a cliffhanger ending it was okay we have a potential solution but we have to wait for that solution to come to fruition which right. i really like as well instead of just straight up cliffhanger it's the okay we're leaving you something to get excited about not just what happens all right let's get to scores of spider-man across the spider-verse let's start with and we're pointing all at each other and we're going to watch you, on youtube you, 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 see you, you. you. Uh, i don't even need to do that but i need to go last i want uh, <laughs> you need to go la okay all jeremy right. gover's uh <laughs> taken score for for this version of uh the spider-verse okay well uh, let's see. Where do I start? Uh, in our DC League of Super Pets episode, I'm going way off the board here, <laughs> we talked about how DC live action movies were, let's say, 8 out of 10, just crap on a stick. Yeah. Right? But then their animated features, like DC League of Super Pets, like Teen Titans Go, were pretty solid. They're yeah. pretty enjoyable. They're good. They're rewatchable. Right? All those things. And we... So we jokingly said, maybe half joking, that DC should just <laughs> stick to animated movies. Right? That's how that was. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is, now, in fairness, this is before the whole James Gunn right. Right, transition, right? But that's what we said. Was that just let's stick to animation movies. They seem to be doing well for you. Forget all the other stuff. Let's just do that. Still seems valid for me. Uh, well, <laughs> maybe so. Okay, uh, that's true. Based on what we've had, Shazam, Black Adam. So, uh, Sony should do the same thing. They should stick with Spider Man movies. <laughs> because all their Spider-Man movies are great. <laughs> Morbius, Hot Garbage, Venom. I liked it, but, you Man. know, not the best movie yet. Yeah. Right? Sure. So let's just stick. Sony, let's just embrace the Spider-Man movies. And because your money. <laughs> the five you've put out, I think it's five, right? Five now? Five Spider-Man movies are terrific. They're all great. You're nailing it. Uh, yeah, just let's, let's just stick with that. <laughs> let's not extend our reach. Uh, it felt long to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're, they're, now, not the whole thing, right? Sure. But when you're in a marathon, so, you know, it's two hours and 20 minutes. For 2023, it's actually not a marathon. But still, when you're in a movie that's two hours and 20 minutes long, you don't want to be noticing the time. I right. don't want to be looking at my phone to see what time it is. I, you sh I shouldn't have that escape, even for a split second. It should be like, you should keep me engrossed. Right. And you did, they didn't. There were pockets, not a lot of them, but there were pockets that I was like, man, is this still going? Like, it's long. Maybe because I knew it was a part one. That actually may be why. Because I knew it was a part one. I was like, like well, they could have just ended it right there with the cliffhanger. Oh, right. no, here we go again. And 40 minutes later, they could have ended it right here. Oh, no. We're it's got to factor in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there were some action sequences that made me a little sick. Nothing, you know, egregious. I didn't have to turn away or close my eyes or anything, but 
Imagine well, being in 40x. Like gym. I know, I know that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, my, my, my heart yes. immediately went so out to yes. uh, Cookies were tossed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing. Snicker doodle. <laughs> Ooh, so <laughs> no, uh, nothing that I, you know, it was too agree. I didn't have to close my eyes or any, you know, like turn away or anything like that. That I had to do on like the Harry Potter ride at uh, at Universal, for example. Like I had to like, okay, I can't, I just can't watch, can't watch, can't watch it over. Okay, gets over, you know. So I didn't do any of that, but it was still like I noticed it. Yeah, there was a couple sequences. I was like, ooh, okay. All right. were, were you in regular uh, IMAX? Like two? IMAX, IMAX, yeah, not 3D though. Correct. Okay, yeah, just want to clarify. Yeah, just IMAX, yep. Yeah. And uh, somebody noticed this. So there's points off for that uh, to a degree. Points. Well, okay, half a point probably. Okay. When I see a movie, I want. I say this all the time. When I see a movie, I want one main thing other than the basics, which is like continuity and good screen. Other than people. that, no. Well, other than that, <laughs> the one thing I want to see is show me something you, I've never seen before. Across the Spider Verse did that. Eight point five. Very good. Very good. Justin he Bradford. Has go, he has to go last. You want to go last? I want to go last. He specifically requested. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, this is Jim, and I, I just loved the first Spider-Verse film. Uh, I, I'm, there was something about it that year. That, I mean, 2018, yep. I think, is when it yep, came out. 2018. And there was so many great uh, superhero movies that came out that that year uh i mean you have uh you know black panther, black panther and, yeah. you know uh, in, you know the end game and uh but there was something about what sony brought with this animated version of spider-man and, and miles that just felt like it had gone where none of the others had gone before uh that I, if they had done the traditional spider story uh that it would have it would have been tiresome, even with beautiful animation like they've done. Uh, that looks more like graphic design than mm -hmm. it does animation. Uh, but uh, they didn't, and they brought a totally different vibe and feel to it. I love, you know, dark New York City, sooty city, uh, Spider-Man in, in Miles you know, version of it. Uh, I love his family dynamic, and they did it better in this film than they did in the first one and i thought they did it very well visually they top themselves again i will say occasionally yes it does give you a little maybe a little vertigo or just messes with your head a little bit that could have maybe turned it down just at five percent but uh you know i'm not going to complain because that got me so many other things that was just this feast for the eyes that i thought almost every frame of this movie could be a poster that i would want right because it's just gorgeous mm -hmm. um it, voice acting was well the character arcs and the the way they do the drama uh involved is uh i think not given nearly enough credit in the first one or this one um it is done so much better than live action movies of its similar kind that uh, these movies need to be celebrated. I don't think I would say Sony just do Spider-Man movies, <laughs> but I will I'm say just this. Going on a track record here, Jim. I, I will say this though: I, I wouldn't mess with the way they're doing Spider-Man with a little bit of cooperation from Marvel, mm -hmm. but still retaining their own artistic vision is fresh. It feels good. And I highly recommend it. Pull a friend into this movie. I am also giving it an 8.5. Mm. All right. This is do Justin. Need, do we need fanfare for Bradford's part here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just because I just got back from the British consulate. Not, you're gonna need fanfare. Okay, <laughs> good reference. No one will get. He's consulate dropping. If you follow me on social media, <laughs> which you can follow me and Gover and Jim. Uh -huh. You know, if you go to the Untitled Film Project podcast on Twitter, you can click a link there, and you find all the places we're on on social media. Excellent. Just segue. Untitled Film Project podcast. We have a website as well. Yeah. Where all of mm -hmm. Gover's reviews, written reviews, are housed there. You can find all of our podcasts, our YouTube videos, our TikToks are all on the website. One place. I know. Untitled Film Project Pod. Dot com. Dot com. And uh, if you did follow those, you'd know that uh, Justin, kind of like James Bond, uh, was at a uh, <laughs> the British Consulate's gala. 
and was probably wearing some kind of white tuxedo with an e- with an earpiece <laughs> hey, yeah. connected to headquarters. Um, so yes, uh, you, Special Olympics headquarters. You live a s- an underground tunnel to Buckingham Palace. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Gosh. So yes, you, anyways, you have a special charmed life. <laughs> anyways, my expectations were high going in, and it wasn't just because of what I'd seen on social media. It's just because of what the first one accomplished, and knowing that they need to take this one to the next level and understand as well that this is what they're, they're putting everything on is this Miles Morales story and knowing there's going to be another part to this it's going to be something big and epic while well, it's completely blown away through everything uh, we've talked about the animation style and the use of color the use of emotion through color uh, the music Daniel Pemberton who also did the score for the first one I loved how we could hear the tones from the French horn at certain parts there mm. that were call back to the first in the Spider-Verse the, the the riffs that you would hear for Miles Morales's theme uh, the other big one was the soundtrack as well with Metro Boom and what he was able to put together for another fantastic soundtrack excellent because you are feeling what Miles Morales is feeling and you are feeling the moments that are going on not just because of the score but because of the soundtrack and not too many films there are a few like guardians of the galaxy is one that's great about putting soundtrack and score so well together both of these movies now both these spider-verse movies have done such an incredible job of meshing score and soundtrack to make them mesh so well together to tell a story through music to feel emotion through music to to cue you on what's about to happen through music, to, to keep tell momentum someone, to going, keep momentum going through music, yeah. to I set the scene, it. to set everything, and yes. a lot of it is Brooklyn based and hip hop and what yes. you'll be hearing and it's just everyday life. Yeah, absolutely, and just such a great variety of musicians as well. Mm-hmm. The Metro Boomin put together for that soundtrack, absolutely incredible. The voice acting was absolutely great as well. Haley Steinfeld is fantastic as as Gwen. As She's fantastic Gwen. as everything. She is. She. She She does everything right. She does. And it's just been an incredible arc to see how this is coming. We had to wait five years. I can't believe it was five years for this one. Luckily, we'll have to wait a year, hopefully, and things can change, right, Uh, for the next one. They pushed this one back, so there's no telling. But we're hoping. But they took that time and the extra time from any delay to continue to make this an absolutely yeah. incredible film. And that's what you want to see as, an, as a viewer, right? Is, okay, maybe it was delayed, they had to do some reshoots, whatever, how you do that through animation, redrawings, <laughs> whatever you have to do to adjust the expectations grow for a film like that. And, well, they, they met those. By all means, they met every expectation that I had for it, especially after any sort of delay that they pushed it to the next level because we're going to see this influence of this film on other animation studios from now on. Oh, for We're sure. We're going to absolutely see this because, again, take yep. notice, other animation studios, this is how you do an incredibly animated film that will attract not just comic book people or superhero people, but families in general because this is something different. They, they broke so many different bears, what they've done with this as well. They've been inclusive with their casting, with their drawing, with how they depict everything, the different spider people within this universe. Yep. It is all inclusive of everything you'd want out of a superhero movie. 9.5. Not incredibly surprising because you, I mean, you came, out, with it. You you came out of the gate like that. So. Okay, near perfect is what I said. Yeah. That's near perfect. Which, is, which begs the question what would have given it the extra 0.5? The extra 0.5. It's really difficult to say. It's that it's hard to give something a 10. Oh, it's almost impossible. It's almost impossible to give sure. something a 10. Um, maybe slight little things. Carve off 15 minutes. Got sure. It. That's, a, that's a perfectly acceptable answer. Valid. Yeah, but it's not like it felt like it dragged. It's just carve a little bit off. Yeah. But then again, I like it long because I'm getting more. <laughs> so that's why it's <laughs> difficult to put in there, but near perfect. It's like a pile of donuts in front of me. You know, I'm, I'm going to get sick because oh. I can't stop. <laughs> <Donuts>. <laughs> just don't put it, maybe put one less donut on the plate. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting maple on the way home. <laughs> It's time on the Untitled Film Project podcast for us to get silly with the big question. Of course, Spider-Man, he got his powers because he was bitten by a radioactive spider. So I put it to you, gentlemen. (laughs) First time I've ever called you that. (laughs) If you could be (laughs) bit by a radioactive creature that would then give you superpowers and turn you into a superhero. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us the creature, what the powers you'd have, and maybe what is your franchise name? What, what is your superhero name? 
my thoughtful one would be the praying mantis. Because okay. the male versions get wings, so there's flight. Mm-hmm. They can turn their heads 180 mm-hmm. degrees. Mm-hmm. They have super strength mm-hmm. as well, just as a species overall. They're they're known as being courageous and persistent as well. And I think my, my nickname would be Manny. Manny. <laughs> I like it. But, I like it. Well, didn't uh, there was a uh, like a Naked Night Space Ghost uh, uh, show? Didn't they have like a praying mantis I creature so, that was yes. maybe a sidekick? Uh, yes, yes, they did. Yeah, that's they what did. I'm picturing. But the but the other one would also be cockroach. <laughs> I don't want to know. The name. Well, is that the name? No, that's the that's the it's the insect. Okay, that's the insect. Be, because, I'm afraid of the name. <laughs> well, because they're pretty much indestructible. Yes, yes, that's true. They can survive nuclear war. <laughs> They'll outlive us all. They can outlive anything. And there's no need for a nickname. Just call me cockroach. I really could have stopped at one of those. <laughs> <ones>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like it. My son, who is a grown man, uh, I must I must say, uh, he. Uh, throughout his life has had an obsession with birds to the point where you know where a kid would get excited about something and talk about it nonstop, whether it be dinosaurs or horses or whatever it is his is always birds and it continues to this day in adulthood uh and so he's always telling us about how long they live which ones are the smartest so i have delved into uh, his bird verse <laughs> <laughs> And <clears throat> I would be chosen to be bitten by a radioactive parrot for the reasons <laughs> uh, you do have the power of flight. Mm-hmm. Uh, you uh, have a long lifespan. Yeah, about 100 years, right? Yeah. Uh, very smart. Mm-hmm. Uh, their uh, ability to recall. Mm-hmm. So their memory is excellent. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you're not a superhero, you're like, court stenographer or something <laughs> there's a job for you in the real right. world that's right you can pull in a decent living uh and also mimicry is the ability for a parrot to sound exactly like something else that it hears you've heard you know you've seen them on tiktok where mm-hmm. they sound like uh you know uh, a, a phone's camera shutter or they can do somebody's voice incredibly well so uh mine would also have the power of mimicry which you know could come in handy you know calling grandma and trying to make her think that it's her grandson on the phone and he needs five hundred dollars to get out of jail i was gonna say get out of dinner that's just <laughs> Worth five hundred dollars sometimes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I pay five hundred dollars. So I name him Echo Wing because he can Woo! he can parrot things back. It's almost like an echo, and of course, you know, he has the power of flight. So well, that's the best right. name we're going to see. Today, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, so if I could be bitten by a radioactive anything, what would it be? <clears throat> Basset Hound. Excuse me. No, close. My aunt, my. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would be for the belly rubs. I would be, I would be well, I just you know move on my own schedule. Yeah, sit on the couch. Drooling. Nobody cares. Yeah, they encourage it. Yes, that's probably true. Actually, it's acceptable. Change my answer. Yeah. <laughs> my my answer prior to Bassett was ant eater. Oh, t- tell me why? Because it means I have played with ant eaters at some point. In order to be bitten by them, that means I have to. <laughs> Be hanging out at the zoo behind the scenes or something, messing around with anteaters. Have you always liked anteaters? I do. I've always loved anteaters. Anteaters and aardvarks. The superpower because I could make a killing being a humane exterminator. Ah, so you're solving people's problems. Yeah, so I'm like, you got ants in your house? I'll come over, take care of that for you. sniff them out. Yeah. (laughs) And it's it's not gross because it's part of my diet. Right. So, and then I can just transform back into a normal human being when I'm not doing that. Oh, so you transform, you wouldn't be like a mix of ant eater human. I wouldn't look like a person, like like somebody on the Guardians of the Galaxy anti Earth (laughs) planet. I wouldn't look counter Earth, excuse me. I wouldn't look like that. I would would actually look like myself. It's not like a centaur and ant eater. Uh, Second episode in a row, the centaur episode. (laughs) So, my name would be. Wait, wait. Oh, yes. I've got too many ants. Who am I going to call? Admiral Anteater. Ah, I love I'll it. I'll set a trap. <laughs> <laughs> That's my tagline. What about Manteater? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's if Bradford and I go to business together. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> 
You've been listening to the Untitled Film Project podcast. We've been talking about Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. And boy, did we love it. Uh, We have an exciting new place for you to find all of our content uh, in which we will be expanding our universe uh, for the Untitled Film Project podcast. Justin, tell everybody again all those cool things we have. Um, please visit the Untitled Film Project Pod.com website and you can find all of our podcasts, written reviews, videos, and more. Thank you for listening to the Untitled Film Project Podcast. To support the show, please rate, review, follow, and subscribe. Original music by Jeremy Schwartz. Special thanks to the Music City Film Critics Association. Editing and post production by Jeremy K. Gover. Voiceover by Chad Bennett.